Hello there, my beautiful darlings. Welcome to Shintori's Comfort, where we talk fashion, beauty, and anything possibly related to the first two things that I just said. For today's video, we're gonna go through the history of both Barbie and Bratz and the very petty drama between the companies behind these influential dolls. Because y'all, when I tell you that it's petty, it's ridiculous. But we're gonna take it slow, gonna find out what makes each of these dolls so monumental and special. So grab a snack, get cozy, Possibly sip on some tea like I'll be doing. <sighs> and let's get chatting about the blonde beauty who started it all. I bet you thought I was going to start off with Barbie, didn't you? Well, no. After a trip to Europe, Ruth Handler saw Lily in a store and thought she was just what she was looking for and modeled Barbie after Lily. Do you guys like my effort? I really did try. Honestly, I see Barbie as a more modern, westernized evolution of Lily, and I apologize in advance for my butchering of these names. I promise you, I'm trying so very hard. <laughs> so Bill Lily was a German comic strip character created by cartoonist Renner Buthen on June 24th, 1952 for the Bill Zintug newspaper as more of a filler spot within it, and to his surprise, she soon became popular. Buthen soon got the idea to make Lily into a doll and hired Max Wiesbrot, who worked at Hauser Elysian Company, to create and make her into a doll, and she soon became popular amongst children and was also seen as a gag gift for men, being sold in tobacco shops, adult stores, and toy stores, children, toy stores. Um, <laughs> so as you can see, Belle Lily was very much a risque type of character and that did not go away once Mattel acquired the rights in 1964. So if you'd like a separate video for Lily, let me know down in the comments below. Now let's get to our doppelganger Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> She has transformed into Barbie. You like my Barbie girl interpretation? Hello, hello, hello. I wasn't gonna wear pink, but then I feel like it wouldn't be Barbie if I wasn't wearing pink, you know? But let's get into this stuff. <laughs> Inspired after watching her two daughters play with paper dolls and later on naming Barbie and Ken after her two children, Barbara and Ken, Ruth Handler got the idea for Barbie and used Lily as a stepping stone to bring her vision to life. Ruth worked on the design of Barbie with Jack Ryan, who was the vice president of research and design at Mattel for 20 years. He is also famous for designing Chatty Cathy, Hot Wheels, and Barbie's lover boy Ken, who was added in 1961. Debuting on March 9th, 1959, Barbara Millicent Roberts became the first mass-produced doll with adult features in the United States. However, not everyone at Mattel was excited to produce Barbie considering that she was an adult woman with disproportionate features, and they will later on learn that parents weren't excited about that either. Build Lily was still being sold around the world, including in the U.S., up until 1964 when Mattel acquired the rights. So in 1958, when Mattel had sponsored a market study before Barbie's release, mothers were concerned about Barbie's figure. <laughs> so what did Mattel do to fix this issue, you may ask? Gloss over with marketing. That is correct. And with that, Mattel had became the first to advertise a toy to children on TV following their sponsorship for the Mickey Mouse Club in 1955. However, that was only the beginning of the drama surrounding this doll. Barbie was heavily criticized for her materialistic ways and her body proportions, inspiring art that either was interpreted as idealizing the doll or most commonly by hard to find images, critiquing it with associated ideas ranging from exaggerated femininity to mass consumption. Barbie as a brand is very much a modern day figure of capitalism. I'm pretty sure Barbie would be seen as the American Girl doll if there wasn't already an American Girl doll. There's also a live action movie coming out, which I'm so excited to see because of the actress and just Ryan Gosling apparently decided to come back to making films again. So um, I'm just very curious to see how this is going to turn out, especially learning what little bit I know and apparently you guys as well. And I'm going to see it, whether it is in theaters or the more likely form of consumption streaming services. Now let's get into why Barbie is so loved. So in 
So Miss Barbara debuted in the 50s, a time when women were encouraged to stay home and were viewed as negligent if they tried to pursue a career or anything outside of the role of caretaker. Women who played with Barbie said that she provided an alternative to the restrictive gender roles. She was not teaching nurturing, nor defined by the responsibilities within her relationship, and was a model of self-sufficiency with her many, many careers. Girl, buy me a dream house, I'm just saying. <laughs> I remember playing with my Barbie dolls and I had one guy Barbie and I had many girls and I, I would pretend that they were sitting by the pool and I would put the girls around him and I would have them fighting over him. <laughs> Unknowingly playing The Bachelor with my dolls, but hey, you know, that's what was cool at the time, okay? <laughs> Though I had so much fun playing with my dolls, playing with my Barbies, you know, she wasn't my favorite, you know? I also had Polly Pocket at the time, you know, that cool stuff. And when I think of Barbie, the first few things I think of is not representation. Sure, Mattel had made deeper skin tones by the 2000s, but that wasn't a priority in the beginning, nor would it have been in the 50s. Barbie did not have colored friends till 1968, and a black version of Barbie herself wasn't released until 1980. Most recently in 2016, Barbie Fashionistas was introduced, debuting four body types, seven skin tones, 22 eye colors, and 24 hairstyles, which is very impressive, I will say. Very impressive. And though Barbie was made in the late 50s, I still do heavily associate her with the 2000s. And it's because of films like Legally Blonde, Material Girls, Mean Girls, having a very pink and quote unquote girly aesthetic. And I honestly think Barbie got a revamp in the 2000s. And it really does speak to Mattel's ability to keep Barbie's brand alive throughout the many decades. And that just speaks to how love the brand is and me being one of those kids I really did enjoy Barbie and I know that my statement of the first few things when I think of Barbie is not representation obviously Barbie is very inclusive when it comes down to the right skin tones and hair and everything you know she's doing better than a few other brands obviously she was able to last that long because she soon became inclusive my statement was more focused on just the general face of the brand, face value type of thing. Barbie was only part of the Y2K aesthetic, and I think that's why Carter Bryant's new doll idea was such a huge hit and really gave Barbie a run for her money. <laughs> You guys like my outfit for this section? I think it's like a blend of Chloe and Sasha. You know, it's it's giving winter, obviously, because it's cold. But um, I feel like they always accessorize, you know? They always have a hat on for some odd reason. You know, I got my hoops. I got the jeans, very Y2K. So, I mean, it's my little bit of effort. But what do you guys think? What do you think? <laughs> The girls with the passion for fashion were created by Carter Bryant, who was a former clothing designer for Barbie at Mattel. And when Bryant pitched his idea to Isaac Larian, CEO at Micro Games of America Entertainment, he wasn't too keen on investing in the brats, considering that he thought they looked ugly. And I don't blame him because they have big heads, big feet, wear their noses. <laughs> the noses are nowhere to be found. What sold Larian on the idea of Bratz is when Brian showed his sketches to Larian's then 11-year-old daughter, Jasmine, who thought the Bratz were kind of cute. She even adds that the Bratz were very reflective of the diversity at MGA. And they would later on name Yasmin after Jasmine, which I thought was so freaking cute because hello, Yasmin. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that's so cool. That's a cool, cute fact to learn, at least to me. And when it was time to get the dolls into stores, Larian had noted that on a sales call with a retail corporation that they were not too happy about, not even just not too happy, they didn't want the dolls on their shelves because of the racial diversity. And they were even bold enough to say that they were only willing to buy Chloe. Of course they would only be willing to buy Chloe. But you know what Larian said? He put his foot down and said, you buy them all or none at all. Busters. I'm sure he didn't say that, but <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I'm just inferencing that, you know, he would add a little sauce, a little flavor on it, a little sprinkle, you know. I thought the brat's essence would just be bouncing on to him, you know, just be. <laughs> the brat soon debuted in 2001 and were a huge hit. 
The first edition of Bratz grossed $97 million globally and sales rose up to $2 billion by 2005. Barbie actually saw a decline in sales once Bratz hit the market, but we cannot ignore the very obvious and well-known issues people had with Bratz and it's also part of the reason why they are loved. But let's just get through this part, okay? <laughs> So just like with Barbie, parents were concerned about the body image and lifestyle brats were portraying. Even some parents thinking that brats was very much hyper risqueing young girls. Just for monetization purposes, we're going to say hyper risqueing or um, we're teaching young girls to be very hyper risque. That's, that's the way we're going to say it. Teaching young girls to be hyper risque. Someone went, even went as far as to create a Facebook group called, hold on, let me read it, just so y'all can really see how funny this is. Brat, brat dolls are the sluts in every Barbie dream house, which, <laughs> I don't know why I want that on a t-shirt. That is like the best thing I've read this entire research time because someone was so upset, just felt so passionate about this. And that was just, which is crazy to me because that was the style of the time. It was very reflective of the time. I mean, hello, we had Totally Spies, Kim Possible, Penny Proud, Patricia. You know, we had it all. Even real life examples. Lil' Kim, Christina Aguilera, Paris Hilton. That was the style of the time. And for them to just be like, oh no, oh no. It's just very funny to me. I also find it so sad that there was this set mindset when it came down to both dolls. Because if you played with Barbie, if you were more of a Barbie person, you were, you were seen as more of, you were seen as classy and very career and goal oriented. If you were more into brats, you were seen as artistically, no, creatively loud. You were seen as creatively loud and trashy. Which is so sad, but I'm going to go more into detail about this thought when we get into the legal stuff. <music> diversity, 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 diversity. That was the goal from the beginning and that is what the toy industry was missing back then. The brats were displaying cultures that were not getting much representation and also they had features that were also seen as negative or was really mocked throughout time and history. The most obvious being that their eyes and their lips. Brats also challenged risque femininity and body image pertaining to the way of dressing, obviously from what the previous chapter was about. And it was also very reminiscent of the time of hip hop culture, AKA street style, AKA black American culture. And we actually see a decline in the sales of the dolls in 2010. But we actually saw a revival of the brand in 2017 with the Bratz Challenge on Instagram where people would do their makeup and style themselves as one of the characters. Which honestly, it doesn't even seem like it was that long ago. But at the same time, it makes sense. But then it doesn't seem that long ago. I'm pretty sure if my mind is correct, it was more 2019 but I don't know. I don't remember anything. Honestly, after after COVID, it just, everything just blends together. <laughs> to help boost the online community, British fashion illustrator Hayden Williams designed the 2018 Bratz Collector line. Williams also uploads illustrations of celebrities as Bratz. And there's actually a Bratz fan community dedicated to designing and sewing, making their own clothing for their dolls, which I find so dope because that's more makeup and fashion looks for me to try to recreate. The 2000 style is coming back around and I'm very excited because I get to participate in the fashion trends. I was in my single digits then and the only thing I was worried about was making sure my tail was in front of that TV at seven o'clock to watch the new Hannah Montana TV show. Some of you young kids don't know anything about that. Even when DVRs came into play, we still would record it and sit there <laughs> and watch it at seven o'clock and also make sure that it was recorded so we could watch it over and over again some of you kids don't even know anything about that <laughs> and i'm considered gen z i'm the fossil side of gen z okay and there's a specific article i read for research and the article was by brianna armson 
on Capsule 98. I highly recommend you guys go check it out. I'll link it down below as well as with my other references. She lists a lot about what people loved about the Bratz brand and what it represents for them and how they really felt like they were represented and actually had a form of outlet into their creativity. So there's also this article written by Beatrice Hazelhurst where she shares a specific person's, um, I guess you would say thought process on the brats. And I thought it was so fascinating. And I want, and I want to, and I'm going to read part of it for you guys because it just, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about the curated and set mindsets that we have towards both Barbie and brats. So Dr. Jillian Hernandez, a black and Latinx aesthetic scholar, community arts educator, and curator, was first introduced to brass through her daughter who actually wanted a doll. She was immediately thrown off by the dolls and was forced to confront her biases after many people kept comp complimenting her on her brat doll-like features. And this is what she actually had to say. I came to realize that Barbie is also a risque representation. However, Barbie's body is perceived as acceptable due to her whiteness, while Bratz is viewed as unacceptable due to their racial difference. What I think it really boils down to is stereotypes about cultures and social issues being pressed onto toys for children. Some not even being made for children. I'm looking at you, but Lily. <laughs> and from my own perspective, Bratz and Barbie overlap in so many ways. Both teaching young kids that they can accomplish anything, really encouraging them to really just go get it. Just really go do it. Shoots in the Bratz show or movie. I forgot which one it was, but the Bratz were like, Hey, let's make, let's have our own fashion magazine. They're like, okay. And just did it. And I just find that so cool. Even Barbie being known for having so many careers and really teaching kids the power of also of teamwork and you can't always accomplish everything alone and to really just be confident and express themselves through fashion and it's such a shame that we are forced to have these thought processes onto toys you know and it's sad that you know though it's it also teaches us about the time period um you know it's also just sad that that's even a real thing and I think there's room for both brands to shine because they still represent two different cultures in separate time periods. Heck, Ariana Grande was just repping the 60s look for her Positions album, you know? <laughs> and I honestly, in my humble opinion, don't think that Bratz would have been as big of a hit if they were not with MGA. If anything, I felt that they needed to be separated. But Mattel did not seem to think so because they sued Carter Bryant and MGA for intellectual property damages, starting a 20 year, almost 20 year legal battle between the two companies. Now we have made it to the portion of the video that made me want to make it in the first place. Lawsuits! And I bet y'all thought I was gonna change outfits. No, I'm done changing, okay? I'm done for, I'm done with this video, okay? The tea didn't even make it back. I made, I had the tea in the beginning. It wasn't even tea. It was just water in a cup. I was, <laughs> so I'm actually gonna be throwing out a lot of dates, a lot of numbers. So hopefully you're able to keep up with me, okay? And yeah, so let's just get into it. So Carter Bryan left Mattel in 2000 and presented his idea to MGA later that same year. According to MSNBC, though Barbie still held the biggest share in the United States, Bratz became Mattel's biggest competitor, taking 60% of the market in Europe, South America, and Australia. Mattel first sued Carter Bryant in 2004 for breaching his employee agreement he signed working there, claiming that Bryant came up with the idea of Bratz while he was still employed, misappropriating trade secrets. Ooh, skin messy. Soon, Mattel sues MGA as well in 2006 for intellectual property damages. And before Mattel's trial with MGA in 2008, Bryant and Mattel settled out of court. Mattel won the first trial being awarded millions. I can't remember ex the exact amount. Well, I mean, the exact amount was varying between websites that I read. It went from $85 million to $100 million that was rewarded. Of course, MGA appealed. And one of the Ninth Circuit's rulings held that the jury should have found that the agreement between Carter Bryant and Mattel to be ambiguous because it was unclear if having an idea for the dolls fits into the definition of invention. 
The court also felt that Bryant coming up with the idea while he was employed was also very unclear. And it didn't help that Mattel's agreements between each employee was different. So MGA ended up winning their appeal. MGA then sues Mattel, counterclaiming that from 1992 to 2009, Mattel had people use fake ID cards to steal trade secrets by spying on their unreleased product concepts and marketing plans at trade shows. In April 2011, MGA won and was awarded $309 million in damages in legal fees. However... <laughs> Oh, about to break stuff. In 2019, the Ninth Circuit threw out the judgment stating that MGA's claim should not have been considered since it was unrelated to Mattel's initial lawsuit. You can't sue for that because that's unrelated, which I find so dumb because trade secrets was just used. But whatever, okay. I don't know anything about law. <laughs> don't come to me about law. I'm just presenting what I found. And since then, MGA has since offered three times, MGA has offered three times to merge with Mattel. Once in 2015, another in 2017, and lastly in 2018. And of course, Mattel declined every single time. And both companies are still in and out of court to this day. And I just find it so sad and just dumb. I mean... Because MGA still owns Bratz. That was the point. That was the initial lawsuit from the jump. They still own it. Business-wise, I get why Mattel would sue MGA. Financially, though, it doesn't make any sense because both companies have spent well over billions of dollars by now at this point on legal fees. Even though I prefer Bratz over Barbie, you know, I still have my Barbie girl moments. I still want to be like, ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's still a thing. Like, I still want to have my little Barbie girl fun. And like I said before, both brands have two separate aesthetics, bring two different perspectives that I don't think, I think it was smart for them to not even be merged at all or be under the same umbrella. To me, that almost could have caused a whole monopoly effect. I feel like it all started because Mattel couldn't handle a little bit of competition. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Were you more of a Bratz or Barbie kind of girl or guy? We don't judge here. Let me know down in the comments down below. And I pray you all have a blessed and awesome rest of your day and week. And remember to find comfort in being yourself. Peace out.